look, I'm a fan of video games. I think they're great for relieving stress, creative problem solving, dexterity, and ensuring that, you know, I don't follow you home and kill your whole family for cutting me off in traffic, you stupid fucking car. I will find you, Corolla. I will fucking find you. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Before we get into this episode, I want to let you guys know that if you want to be in the virtual audience for one of these recordings, you can do so by getting a ticket uh, on the last Thursday of every single month where I do these Zoom shows and it's a new show every month talking about another kind of big sociopolitical topic. So if you're interested in that last Thursday of every month, you can grab your tickets, come join us in the Zoom virtual theater and be a part of these Forkful of Noodles recordings. You can find that ticket information over on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're there, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums, you can check out past episodes of this show, my interview show, Taboo Table Talk, and the live stream, more riffy show that I do about current events and news stories called Road Reflections. Again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. And if you're interested in, in supporting this show financially, you can do so on the website as well by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member and making monthly contributions. To those that are already making monthly contributions, I really, really appreciate you guys and you guys help make this show better with each contribution. All right, now let's get right into the episode. Now, Americans are the most propagandized people in the world. Right. How China is depicted in American corporate media is a glaring example of how propagandized Americans really are. It shows how China has a 20 percent favorability in America and people still talk shit on China constantly. But hashtag stop Asian hate trends on Twitter pretty consistently. One of the biggest pieces of propaganda we hear about China is, is their nonstop human rights abuses. And when people ask for proof, the corporate media shows a blurry photo of what could also just be a, a sonogram. But where did where, where they did show some proof uh, was the violence against the Muslim Uyghur population in Xinjiang. Uh, but it, of course, was all a hoax from manipulated data. American corporate media was reporting about a genocide of the Muslim Uyghur population based on a paper published by Adrian Zenz, a right-wing scholar and evangelical Christian. Now, according to Zenz, there is a, quote, demographic genocide of the Muslim Uyghurs in, quote, authoritarian China. Before we go on here, we should really address the term right-wing scholar. I'm sure if you're a reader like myself, that term gave you a migraine. That's like saying friendly shark or productive politician or racist intellectual, right? It just, it just doesn't add up in your brain. And, and if it does, look, I'm afraid you're having a nonstop stroke and you should very much consult a doctor and probably also a library. I'm sorry, library. I, I will say that in your native tongue. You should go to the library. Okay, so Adrian Zenz is not just an oxymoron, but he's also a Christian fundamentalist that doesn't believe in LGBTQ rights or gender equality. He also says he's, quote, led by God to bring down China. All right, name one time in human history where someone has claimed that they're, quote, led by God and it didn't end in bloodshed. I'll give you a second. Did, did, you, did, you, figure, did you figure it out? Because I, I don't think you can. You just can't because it's never happened. The only reason we tolerate this kind of stuff is because he's anti-socialism and rich. If he was an average Joe making these sorts of claims, he would be institutionalized. 
Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't God make Chinese people too? So wouldn't they be children of God as well? So why would God make one of his kids kill another bunch of his kids? I mean, that sounds pretty fucked up to me. Like, like even Shakespeare wouldn't come up with a tragedy this insane. Okay, so let's break down exactly what's happening in China and how the real information got filtered through the diagnosably schizophrenic brain of Adrian Zenz. Between 2010 and 2018, the Uyghur population grew by about 25%. The native Chinese Han population grew by about a million people at that time. Now, the Han's population, the population growth was regulated because of China's one-child policy. In 1979, China's one-child policy was used to limit the growth of the population so they could stabilize their economy and allocate resources appropriately. But at that same time, the policy also included intrusive methods like monitoring menstruation and uh, coerced sterilization, along with monetary fines. Now, this was called, and I'm using the scientific term here, being a fucking creep. But hey, how is that different than what the Republicans want to do with women's health in America in 2021? The Uyghur population was exempt from this law, but was still somewhat regulated. The Uyghurs were allotted two to three kids, depending on where they lived. In 2015, under Xi Jinping, this law was relaxed. Everyone could have up to two kids in urban areas and three in rural areas. The focus of this new plan was family planning and sexual education, along with making contraception more available to people in all communities. In 2017, China's National Health and Planning Commission put about $5.2 billion into their infrastructure to ensure that people's health was a priority. They offered free mental health services and inoculations as part of this plan. Now, after 2015, the infant mortality rates and life expectancy rose everywhere in China, but particularly in the Xinjiang province. And a new generation of more sexually liberated people were not looking to have children. And this is what contributed to the decrease in birth rates in the world's most populated country. Now, Article 2D of the Geneva Convention states that a, quote, demographic genocide would be, quote, imposing measures to prevent births within the group and is qualified by those acts, quote, committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial or religious group as such. Preventing births isn't genocide. It's birth control. I mean, condoms prevent births. Are you saying that the Trojan man is a genocidal maniac that gets commercials during America's Got Talent? Do you really believe the phrase, wrap it before you tap it, is a call to bring back the death camps? I mean, it can be seen that way from the perspective of like a, like a sperm. Uh, birth control, well, guys, that's just in the name. It controls births. More accurately, it controls whether you want to have births or not. Now, Zenz's paper also shows a photo of an elderly couple getting a health checkup and reports that as intrusive birth control methods. <laughs> what? Look, no one over the age of 50 is trying to have kids, you know, unless they're the punchline of a Tracy Morgan joke. We'll go get a pregnant. We'll go get a pregnant. That's the best Tracy Morgan you're going to get out of me. And because the State Department published Zenz's paper, they didn't peer review it or corroborate his stories. I mean, really, why look for proof when all you want is manipulated data for the sake of propaganda? Guys, facts don't care about your feelings, but propaganda will gaslight you to think your feelings don't even exist. China specialist Lyle Goldstein countered Zenz's paper and added that the Uyghurs are repressed in China far more than what lefty socialist progressives like myself would like, but there is no evidence of a genocide. In fact, with how much China puts into their health care, it sounds like they're trying to improve their lives. 
oh, I get it. I figured it out. It's a monetary genocide. Sociopathic capitalists like Adrian Zenz look at how much money is being put into the healthcare program as a genocide of cash. G guys, look, helping people kills cash, okay? Won't somebody please think about the Benjamins? And like the U.S. has any grounds to talk about the persecution of a minority community when minorities have been a victim of America's foreign and domestic policies constantly. I mean, how many Muslim countries is America at war with? A fucking bunch of them. How many extreme fundamentalist groups has America armed gleefully? I'll give you a hint. It's fucking all of them. Peace isn't good for business. Hell, I'm Indian, and I've been caught in anti-Muslim hate. Through the lens of xenophobic nationalism, anything brown with facial hair is a potential threat. I bet we did have the second coming of Christ, but thanks to the shock and awe, I bet Jesus, was being the bearded brown man that he is, was attacked viciously and decided, you know what, we're not really worth it, and left. Thanks, America. You and the military-industrial complex fucked everyone out of heaven. You know, if, if, if heaven's like real and stuff. And this is not including the regular killings of black, brown, indigenous people at the hands of the police, a.k.a. rich people's mercenaries. So before America even utters the words human rights, it needs to clean up the factory that produces human rights violations at home and abroad. And now to abruptly switch the tone. Video games. The Xi Jinping administration is cracking down on video games, according to corporate media. Today, minors in China can't play more than three hours of video games on the weekend. They're also banned from playing video games during the week. And to most people, this sounds insane. But there is a cultural explanation to this. China's education system is, a, is high pressure and very, very competitive. Young people in China, you know, go to school uh, a lot more than kids in America do. They spend more time in the classroom. They spend more time doing homework. Uh, a normal school week in China isn't just, you know, Monday through Friday from, you know, 8.30 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon, but it, it pretty much runs from from breakfast till dinner, and then they'll be doing a lot of homework after dinner. And they also go to school half a day on Saturdays. And many families, even even with the uh, you know the the efforts to to regulate private tutoring. So you start with bagels and biology, and end with steak and statistics. Plus, there's extracurriculars as well. So these kids don't likely have more than three hours of free time to play video game. And besides, this encourages kids to play outside, spend time with family read or pursue other creative outlets. Look, I'm a fan of video games. I think they're great for relieving stress, creative problem solving, dexterity, and ensuring that, you know, I don't follow you home and kill your whole family for cutting me off in traffic, you stupid fucking car. I will find you, Corolla. I will fucking find you. <clears throat> But I put a restriction on myself for gaming as well, right? I give myself an hour and a half to two hours, and then I have to move around or, or do something else. And I usually only can play video games once or twice a week. Now, according to U.S. corporate media and neoliberals, I'd be considered self-authoritarian. To everyone with a functional brain, I'm showing like discipline and self-autonomy. But this law is aimed towards younger kids, you know, the ones that haven't figured out discipline or self-autonomy. I mean, for fuck's sake, I know people in their 40s with no discipline and self-autonomy. Look, video games tend to be addictive, even to adults. OK, just trust me on this. There was a moment where I would have sucked your dick for let's not. This is. It's not the time for this story, but, you know, video games can be addictive. These kids are likely to be less distracted and can concentrate on their education a little bit more. Look, I'm not a huge fan of this law, but I think it's far from authoritarian. It's not like they're jailing kids for playing video games for too long. There's no gulag for Grand Theft Auto. 
There's no prison for visiting the PlayStation store. There's no slammer for using Kirby's hammer. There's no jail time for playing Sands of Time. And there's no solitary confinement for online multiplayer enjoyment. But this law exists in various Southeast Asian countries. It's part of how competitive and rigorous the education system is. <clears throat> and because of that competitive culture, it allowed the private education industry to thrive and take root in China. The private tutoring companies that were primarily utilized by the rich in China were publicly traded on the stock market. So Xi Jinping has banned private tutoring corporations in China. I liked how the wording of the Ministry of, uh, of Education here led the, the ministry to call the, um, the ed sector hijacked by capital. So this you know, policy was really coming in and saying, OK, enough with profiting off of the education sector, off of these students' anxieties, parents' anxieties, um, which obviously there's a litany. I don't even probably need to explain the many kinds of uh, abuses that some of these companies had in terms of trying to lure in families that are just pretty uh, anxious to get their schools ahead, uh, their students ahead. Um, and then so the, the rule is, is actually not that. Um, shocking. It's just saying that this industry uh, should not be for profit. Uh, this industry should not have foreign funding or shouldn't be listed on stock exchanges. Uh, and uh, the, also regulating some things about, oh, you know, on holidays and weekends, they shouldn't be uh, teaching these core courses. Um, so we've actually seen um, since then some some interesting improvements in how this is um, uh, addressing what is called education inequality. Because ultimately, common prosperity, one of the aspects is education, is if some people can kind of get this, get ahead through the secondary stream, it's going to weaken the resources in the public sector. So this is happening at the same time that other um, aspects of, you know, um, more funding into the public education system, uh, higher salaries per public education uh, teachers, uh, and also reducing things like uh, the amount of mandatory tests or, you know, this practice of posting the tests and the rankings of the tests at the schools, which is like hugely stressful for students yeah. and making those making, you know, other things like sports and arts education more of a priority than just, you know, cramming. And so uh, cracking down and it is a crackdown, a positive crackdown, let's say, on the private tutoring industry that was totally preying on this um, on, on young people and their parents. Um, I, I actually had advancement for people here. Education is a public commodity in China, and they don't believe that it's right to profit off that. But this is only part of the solution to the problem of education. If China wants to eradicate the exploitation of, of their education system, then it has to be far less of a competitive culture. Competition to that level only opens the opportunities for exploitative capitalists to come in and profit off that need to be the best. Banning private tutoring is the first step. But it's hard for American media to attack China's policy of not commercializing education when most Americans are calling for an end to student debt and a restructuring of how education is looked at. So the story becomes about restricting kids' freedoms. And this is coming from the same country that wants to cancel the school lunch program because kids might get a little too used to eating food. And fuck all do I wish this was a joke. This is actually something a school board member said in Wisconsin back in August of 2021. They're claiming free lunches have, quote, spoiled American families who've become, quote, addicted to food. You know, the thing that prevents hunger and death, the thing that provides nutrition to your body, the thing that every living creature needs, food. Yeah, America wants to keep kids hungry for the sake of, quote, the economy, a.k.a. some rich asshole's bottom line. But yeah, China's policy of limiting video games for growing underdeveloped brains is really the problem here.
I mean, the hypocrisy is enough to make your head spin. And and if your head's not spinning and, and this makes sense to you, look, I think you're probably having a nonstop stroke. Have you not gone to the doctor yet? You should really go and see a doctor. Look, if America cancels the school lunch program, which was started thanks to the Black, Black Socialists of the Black Panther Party, It'll only lead to an underground snack cartel in every playground in America. Kids dealing dime bags of gummy bears, eight balls of crushed up Oreos, and they'll be mainlining juice boxes and passing around the pudding cup. It's lick, lick, pass. Don't be a greedy bastard, Jeremy. The corporate media hides the actual truth by bending the truth about nations and ideologies that don't serve capitalism and its addicts. It's not hard to debunk the truth behind the headlines as long as you're willing to use, you know, a few extra brain cells. That's literally all it takes to push past propaganda. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video and podcast. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. Uh, and please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, whether you are watching this on YouTube or Rockfin or Odyssey or Facebook or listen to the audio version. Please make sure that you are subscribed to receive updates to know when I'm putting out new videos because uh, I put out videos uh, on, a, on a relatively regular basis. Uh, and uh, the easiest way to keep up with everything that I do is by joining my free email list. I send out one email every single Sunday. Uh, that gives you a list of all of the videos and podcasts I've released. And sometimes you get some bonus uh, short stories and real life stories as well. Uh, not only that, you can also become a sustaining member making monthly contributions, which gets you a bunch of bonus stuff like uh, bonus stand up shows, bonus stand up comedy content uh, and, uh, and and bonus videos that, that, that you get uh, from me as well. So there's tons of bonus stuff that you get by becoming a sustaining member uh, and you can get tickets to be in the virtual audience of the next Forkful of Noodles recording, which happens on the last Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. All of this information, all of these links are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. I want to thank everybody that, that has subscribed, has liked, has shared all of my content, has become sustaining members. You guys are, are uh, uh, big reasons that, that, sh that shows like this continue to, to be made and the quality of these shows continue to improve. So thank you very much uh, from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, but till the next one, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the road.